Dear students, welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am Shankar Narayan Paliri, Assistant Professor, NSS Training College, Otapalam, Kerala. Today, I have to discuss with you a module on Ancient and Medieval Education of India. This module is titled Buddhist Education to Medieval Period Education. Let me state the objectives of the module. By this module, I would like to introduce the philosophical and educational contributions of Buddhism and also like to develop the metacognitive awareness of learners on the formal contributions of Buddhism as a system of education, critically evaluate the contributions of Buddhist education. Another aim is to introduce the philosophical and educational contributions of Jainism to understand the contributions of ancient Indian universities Takshashila and Nalanda, to develop awareness on educational development with Islamic system in India during medieval period. And by this module, learners will also critically evaluate the medieval Islamic education system in India and an attempt will also be made to identify the non-Islamic education streams during medieval period. Now, let us have a note on Buddhism. Buddhism rather than just religious philosophy has a great potential for formal education. Buddhist system of education has contributed many formal centers of institution and learning that even include universities. Buddhist system of education was a continuation of Vedic education in ancient India. It was developed according to the heterodox schools of Indian philosophy. I am sure that you know Buddhism is a religion founded by Gautama Buddha in 563 BC. Buddhist education emerged with the teaching of Gautama Buddha. It is roughly started from 600 BC onwards. The Buddhist Sanghas were almost parallel to Vedic Gurugul, a system with a different name. Now, let me present the characteristic features of Buddhist education. Buddhist education was an institutionalized system and carried out in Buddhist viharas. Bhikkhus were the teachers. The education was carried out by Buddhist monks. Monasteries were the sole centers of education in Buddhist period. The initial ceremony of Buddhist system of education was known as Babajja or Pabajja. And the final ordination ceremony was known as Ubasambada or Ubasamvada. The Buddhist education was completely residential. Another notable feature is that Buddhist education was open to all. There were no caste system or any other barriers to those who seek education. The studenthood was dedicated to viharas. Cordial teacher pupil relationship existed in Buddhist education system. This education provided opportunities for commercial and occupational education. The most important feature of Buddhist education was the higher education centers with the full fledged status of universities. Nalanda, Vikramashila, Ujjain, Sambhori, Midila, Vallabhi, etc. are examples for such higher education centers. Now friends, we can discuss the aims of Buddhist education. Buddhist education put forward nirvana as the ultimate aim. Nirvana literally means liberating human soul from the sufferings of life. Other aims are physical, mental, intellectual and moral development of individual. To make pupils familiar with four noble truths and eight noble fold paths of Buddhist ideology. Development of all human and social values, particularly love, tolerance, non-violence or ahimsa and sacrifice. Some other aims are mold religious as well as secular individuals with moral qualities, propagating the Buddhist preaching and inculcation of religious feelings. To make learners able to lead practical life was another aim of Buddhist education develop human personalities with high social, personal, religious and human values. Friends, now I present the features of curriculum, methods, 
discipline and role of teachers in Buddhist period. Buddhist education had clearly planned programs for curriculum and methods of teaching. Education was carried out in the Pali language. Options to learn in mother tongue and in Sanskrit were also provided. You may find that the importance of Sanskrit based education reduced at the Buddhist period. The Buddhist curriculum included the teaching of Buddha, Dharma Shastra, Tripitagas. The Tripitagas are the Vinaya Pitaga, Sakta Pitaga, and Dhamma Pitaga. The curriculum in Buddhist education also provided opportunities to Hindu religious philosophies, Vedas, logic, Ayurveda, mathematics, music, fine arts, and military training, etc., are given in the curriculum. Practical subjects like spinning, weaving, stitching, printing clothes, art, sculpture, architecture, medicine, etc., were also included in Buddhist curriculum. Buddhist education mostly followed verbal teaching. Teachers promoted by heart learning and retraining through meditation. Repetition and recitation were also the common methods in use. Learners were given opportunities for oral presentation, lecturing, recitation, discussion, debates, seminars, question answer methods were the common methods used in Viharas. Educational conferences, primitive form of workshops and study tours were commonly practiced as methods of instruction. Now, we can have a discussion on Buddhist education its discipline, curriculum, methods and role of teacher. Discipline at Viharas was given high priority. Discipline through self-control and self-imposed restrictions prevailed throughout Buddhist education. Celibacy, renunciation of worldly desires and passions, wear simple dress, follow scanty food, humble living and strict discipline were the part of the life in Viharas. Students must have to undergo physical training and martial arts. The Buddhist teachers or the bhikkhus were learned persons, high moral and mental order. Teachers were regarded as spiritual and intellectual patrons. They imparted education, they wrote books, explained holy scripts, led discussions and conducted debates on series of topics. The Buddhist teachers were live live always. They were available at all time. There existed very intimate and cordial relationship between teachers and students. It is saying that teacher-pupil relationship in Viharas were close, affectionate, pure, good and warm. A type of parental relationship was strongly maintained between teachers and pupils. The teacher was even responsible for treatment of the student whenever he fell ill. Education at Vedic system started with an induction ceremony, as you may know, the Ubanayana. Buddhist education system also had an induction program, as we discussed it before, that was Pabajja. Pabajja or Babajja was considered a sacred function. The word Pabajja means going out. Pabajja directs learner to renounce all his worldly and family relationship. For Pabajja ceremony, the individual had to get his head fully shaved and put on yellow clothes. In this shape, he was presented before the presiding bhikkhu of the Vihara. On his prayer, the head bhikkhu of monastery administered three basic advices. The three advices were, I take refuge with Buddha, means Buddha Sharanam Gachami. I take refuge with religion, dharma sharanam gachami. I take refuge with the order, sangha sharanam gachami. Order or sangha means the Buddhist monastery. The aspirant or admission used to pronounce these advices very distinctly. Being admitted to the sangha, the individual was called a shraman or Sharman. At the start of this module, I said you 
that the culmination ceremony of Buddhist education known as Ubasambada. Let us discuss the features of Ubasambada or Ubasamvada. Ubasamvada was a type of convocation ceremony. After Pabajja, the Shraman, I mean the student, had to undergo the education for 12 years. At the end of the education, Ubasambada ceremony was conducted. It was conducted for those who decided to continue in the viharas. The Sharman, I mean the student, has to present himself in front before all other monks of the monastery. The student could be admitted for this ceremony only when the majority of the monks stood in favor for, of him. After this ceremony, the Sharman was regarded as full-fledged member of the monastery. On this occasion, all his worldly and family relationships ended. Friends, I hope you get some idea about Buddhist scheme of education. Now, I want to present a critical review of the Buddhist system. Buddhist education was highly institutionalized. Viharas and monasteries were the sole agents of education. It was free of communal and caste narrowness. Buddhist education gave equal importance to physical, mental and spiritual development of the individual. An individual belonging to any caste could be admitted to a monastery. After being admitted to the Sangh, student never be mentioned with a caste name. There were clearly defined curriculum, methods, strategies and teacher pupil roles. Though viharas were very strict in discipline, there was no corporal punishments. Medium of teaching was flexible. They followed Pali, Sanskrit and mother tongue of the taught. We can see some demerits also with Buddhist education. An important drawback was that dominance of religious ethos in all sects of education. This resulted in the neglect of material development. Another demerit we can see that learners family life was denied to certain extent. They have to leave family and relationships to avail the education. Buddhist education was need based rather than psychological. Of course, psychology was not a discipline then, but what I mean is that it was not at all learner centered. The system and the practice of education nullified the free thinking of learners. Women education during the Buddhist period was at its lowest status. Women were educated very rarely. Co-education was not practiced at all. Learners will have a doubt that what are the differences between Vedic and Buddhist education in ancient India. We can just have some points of distinguishers between these two streams of education. In this table, let us see the differences between Vedic education and Buddhist education. Vedic education given emphasis on Vedas and Upanishads. Buddhist education denied Vedas, it gave importance to teaching of Gautama Buddha. Education was an individualized system in Vedic system. Education was institutionalized according to Buddhist. There was different types of teachers like Gurus, Acharyas, etc. in Vedic system. Bhikkhus or Bhikshus were the only teachers in Buddhist period. Education was imparted in Gurugula or Ashrama in Vedic system. At the same time, Buddhist education was imparted in Viharas. Induction ceremony known as Upanayana in Vedic period. Buddhist induction ceremony known as Pabhaja. In later Vedic period, education was open only to upper caste people. Buddhist education was open to all. Sanskrit was the medium of instruction in Vedic period. Pali, Sanskrit and regional mother tongues were considered for instruction in Buddhist period. Important method was oral instruction according to Vedism. Different types of methods were followed in Buddhist period. Education was mostly religious in Vedic period. At the same time, though carried out in monasteries, education was secular and democratic in Buddhist system. Education was free and Gurudakshana was optional in Vedic period. In Buddhist system, some sort of fees were collected. Other than this religious centered education systems, Ancient Indian education significantly marked with the establishment of universities. Ancient India had two great universities, Nalanda and Takshashila. It is also called Taxila. 
These were the notable contributions of our nation to the higher education. Similar institutions were there at Vikramashila, Ujjain, Sambori, Midila and Vallabi also. Takshashila or Taxila is considered as the world's first university which existed from 800 BC to 550 AD. It attracted students from around ancient world until its destruction in 5th or 6th century AD. It attracted students from Babylonia, Greece, Egypt, Syria, Asia Minor and China. The curriculum in Takshashila included philosophy, law, warfare, strategies, dhanurvidya, languages and grammar, Ayurveda, fine arts, mathematics, astronomy, astrology and so on. Its concern was not with elementary education, but with higher education. Minimum age of admission said to be 16. It is believing that Charaga, Chanakya, Panini were associated with Takshashila University. It was started with later Vedic mode of education and later it became the Vihara of Buddhist system. The archaeological site of Takshashila was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1980. Presently, the remains of Takshashila are in Pakistan near to Rawalpindi. Dear friends, you might have heard of Nalanda University. We can discuss briefly the features of that ancient institution. Historical sources indicate that the Nalanda University existed from 5th to 12th century AD, almost for 800 years. It got high flourish under the patronage of Gupta Empire. Nalanda was an acclaimed large Buddhist monastery or Mahavihara. Historians characterize Nalanda as a university. You see, Amartya Sen has called it the oldest university in the world. He says, Nalanda had been providing higher education to thousands of students from Asian countries for more than 600 years in olden era. Remember the time the first European university was established in Bologna in 1088. Nalanda was a residential university with over 2000 teachers and 10,000 students at a time. It attracted students from almost all areas of Asia like China, Korea, Japan, Tibet, Mongolia, Turkey, Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia. The students and scholars have left records about the atmosphere, architecture and learning conditions of this unique university. The most detailed accounts about the university have come from Chinese scholars and the best known of these are Huang Sang and Yu Jing. The subjects of teaching in Nalanda included Buddhist religious scripts, preaching of Buddha and also included grammar, logic, literature, astrology, astronomy and medicine. Evidences are there to state that library of Nalanda not only collected religious manuscripts but also touched on various subjects. Some of the scholars associated with Nalanda included Aryabhatta, Aryadeva, Dharmakriti, Dharmapala, Janamitra, Nagarjuna, Shilabhadra, Huang Sang and Yu Jing. The Nalanda University was in ancient Magadha Empire, modern day Bihar state, India. The site is located near to Patna. Historic evidences prove that it was very likely looted and destroyed by an army of Bhaktiar Khilji in 1200 AD and the invasion ruined Nalanda completely. There is a genuine doubt by many students. Was Nalanda a university? Let me give a brief answer to this. Nalanda was an institution that can be categorized as a Buddhist Mahavihara. Though it was religious in its tradition, organization and practice, it was a center for higher learning. Nalanda attracted students from different parts of the world. There had plenty of infrastructural support for academic activities, specified curriculum, educational practices. By evaluating the features and contributions, one can undoubtedly evaluate that Nalanda was typical university of ancient period. The title in Europe for a center for teachers and students who organized for teaching and learning in various subjects was Stadium Generale. It was the permanent assembly of teachers and students. The Bologna and Ragio in Italy during 12th century are example for such organizations. This studia generally later developed as universities in Europe. A same type of development we can find in the 
case of Takshashila and Nalanda also. So, we can call them universities. Now, we step to discuss the medieval period education in India. I present the development of medieval period education very briefly. The period from 1200 to 1800, some other view is that from 1000 to 1800 is considered as the period of medieval education. Historians call this era as medieval period in Indian history. Broadly, medieval period education can be segregated into two streams, indigenous systems and Islamic education system. Islamic education system came into India along with the Mahmud Ghazni in AD 10th century. It was a foreign system of education transplanted to India. It highly flourished at the period of Delhi Sultanate and Mughal Empire. The medieval period of education faced its degradation along with the end of Mughal dynasty. Now, we can discuss features of medieval period education. The Islamic education system can be defined only on the ground of Holy Quran and preaching of Prophet Muhammad. The totality of educational operations was based upon these two elements. Medieval Islamic education was highly religious. It was a scheme of education for the religion and of the religion. Institutions were part of mosques. The education at primary level carried out in maktabs and higher education was in madrasas. The technical stream was carried out in karhanas. State had high patronage to educational institutions. Though the rulers never interpreted the aspects of education, the system of education was highly funded, aided and patronized by the state. It was male oriented education. During the medieval period, girls rarely got admission to any Islamic education institutions. Women were out of the system and received only homely education. The induction program was renowned as Bismillah ceremony. Free education was an another notable feature. Education was completely free to the learners. Education was carried out in different media of instruction like Arabic, Urdu, Persian. Teaching was completely based on Holy Quran and religion dominated. Teachers had major role and sole power in Islamic education. Now, we can see the aims of education in medieval period. The main aim of medieval Islamic education was spread of Islamic religion and culture, spread of the messages of Quran and Hadith, enabling the individual for Islamic life, development of moral life and character of individual development of a pious Muslim, preparing the students for the life after his world, equipping the students for a livelihood, prepare officials for palace and governments. Let us see the significant features of medieval period curriculum and method of teaching. Curriculum in medieval Islamic education are the Holy Quran, reading and writing Arabic language and grammar and literature, arithmetics, Islamic literature, life and preaching of Prophet Muhammad, religious scripts, Unani medicine, Islamic history and Islamic laws or Shariat. Other than the Maghdabs and Madrasas, the Karkhanas were functioned in medieval period as centers of education. They were developed as institutions to impart technical education. That clearly indicates Muslim period provided provisions for vocational, technical and professional education. Medieval period has its own methods of teaching. The mostly used method was oral method. Memorization of assigned lessons were the major strategy of teaching learning process. Memorization of Quran was a must. Meaningful learning was not cared. Mass recitation was a method practiced to memorize the Quran. Writing was given importance in madrasas. The teacher in Islamic system was known by different names such as Ustad, Sheikh, Maulavi. Teachers in maktabs may not be able to write, but focus was on their ability to chant Quran and knowledge in Islamic literature. Teachers were respected by the society. Healthy relationship existed between teachers and students. They were received a status of patronage from the students and their family. Discipline in Islamic education system followed rigorous and strict discipline. Authoritarian discipline was imposed on students. Severe corporal punishment was given to the students on the charge of discipline activities. Teachers were the sole authority to make any disciplinary actions. 
From the beginning of the Mughal Empire in India in 1526 until the end of Mughal political presence in 1848, Persian was the court language. Learning Persian was must in all institutions. This era experienced certain indigenously developed education attempts also. Temples and monasteries and certain village houses attempted to impart education through their own ways. This was different in mode and practice from region to region. These types of educational attempts developed with or without state fund. The Samoans of Calicut, Travancore dynasty, Tirichangadu kings, Chidambaram, Hoysalas of Karnataka, Vadayas of Mysore, Shadavahanas of Bidar and some other regions developed certain educational ventures in south. Temples were promoted recitation of Puranas, Brahmanas, Vedandas and Idihasas. Translated versions of Ramayana have come in the scenario of education in many vernacular languages in medieval period. Kamba Ramayana and Adhyatma Ramayana are examples. Certain specially endorsed village houses also imparted education during medieval period. Reading, writing and simple arithmetic were the syllabus. It was undertaken by such families as traditional responsibility. The madams of Kerala and Agrahara of Mysore are example for such ventures. The education was not formal during the medieval period. In South India, the education was multiple in its character and mode of practices designed indigenously or according to the policies of the indigenous rulers. The old part of North India came under Sultanate and Mughals for a long period and the education there looped to the Islamic education system. This traditional ways of imparting knowledge was there in a field such as art, culture, painting, carpentry, medicine, murals, temple art, religious performance and etc. As a result, the caste system became so prevalent in all strata of the society. The indigenous education dealt with arithmetic as a compulsory subject at the elementary stage, literatures were part of the curriculum, moral and religious instruction also included, stories from Puranas and epics were taught. Let us see the pre-colonial education picture. The medieval stream of education in India has end by 1800s. The European invasion slowly encroached the sector of education in India. The missionaries evoked with a formal scheme of education and English medium education. Now, let me retrospect the content of this module. We started from Buddhist education. We understand that Buddhist monasteries were richest centers of education too. We find that ancient India had many higher education centers including the universities like Nalanda and Takshashila. The medieval period education was mainly Islamic education. It was religious in character, but medieval period enriched educational attempts in mathematics, algebra, geography, sciences, language, art, architecture and so on. Finally, we found out that the education streams in our country slowly slanted to the European schemes of education. At the end of the medieval period, the British education ended to its budding stage. I hope you can have a clear picture on the ancient and medieval period education in India from this module. With that hope, let me leave you with thanks. Thank you.